Kimmerhaarschen, Kimmerhaarschen. Welcome back to Speak Gaelic. Hami chotolichtje a vi kutje de vidiest. I am so pleased to be back with you again, and I have a new Gaelic phrase to get us started. Scherste tushin. That means you're the better for it. In other words, it will do you good. Scherste tushin. And as we know, being able to speak Gaelic is good for all of us. You can use the phrase in a number of ways. For example, Scherste to bioch. Some food would do you good. Scherste to bioch. Or maybe if you'd prefer a drink. Scherste to joch. A drink would do you good. Scherste to joch. And that might give you a clue as to the theme of today's programme. Bioch agus joch. Food and drink. Bioch agus joch. So let's see what's ahead of us. How to ask if you can do something. And fit me rocha kain in Rastin. Callum McLean is an Easter Ross, bombarding us with pun after pun. How to discuss things that you need. And famous computer rude renner. And we'll meet Gaelic learner John Gillis from Selkirk, who tells us all about his learning journey. The programme Wummelwan Roy Hachomatoshikuch. With a packed programme ahead, we'd better get started. Vilshiv Jishal Hachomatoshikuch. We're going to look at how to ask if you can or may do something. To do this, we use the phrase Amfut me. May I? Amfut me. It's important to note that although in English we often say can I, meaning may I, Gaelic makes a clear distinction and has a different phrase altogether for I can, as in I'm able to. And that's suringo, which we'll look at later on in the series. Back though to unfoot me, and here are some examples of how to use it in everyday situations. Unfoot me suyen show. May I sit here? Unfoot me suyen show. If you'd like a drink, you could say, Unfoot me jochayin. May I get a drink? Fayin, getting, is lenighted here and becomes ayin. Unfoot me jochayin. If you wanted to order some food, it's Amfut me bioch orstachuch. May I order some food? Amfut me bioch orstachuch. Now, if someone asked you a question starting with the phrase amfut, how would you answer? If the answer was yes, it would be futi. Yes, you may. Futi. And if it was no, it would be Chamut. No, you mean not. Chamut. To tell someone they may sit in a particular place, you say, Futi tu suya in shin. You may sit there. Futi tu suya in shin. And if they aren't allowed to sit there, it would be, Chamut tu suya in shin. You mean not sit there. Chamut tu suya in shin. To tell someone that they can have a drink, it's Futi tu jochayin. You may have a drink. Futi tu jochayin. And if they can't, I'm afraid it would be Chanu tu jochayin. You may not have a drink. Chanu tu jochayin. Let's listen to this next conversation where we'll hear some of these phrases being used and listen out in particular for the words glanuch, cleaning, and skiplochuch, tidying. Han takkris er na hamstrun. En fyrt mi bjega horskeid. Fyrti, fyrti dyrut bjega horskeid. Fyrti du e heitje e glanig, en tjani shen. Fyrti du ne jeitja kan shen e skiplachuk, en tjani shen. 
Has a mere ching and tayakum to shaharn you. Ha? And fit me he like a smear clay on the farke to shaharn you. Hanert se the rogan farke, be mushy copeth, I guess be heen a smear a quick and show. And fit they for a hans and tayakum a shun in a here. Hanert. And fit she pizza a hid to shaharn you. Fitty. Nishing pizza to shaharn you. Nimi heen. U heen agus samir in pizza shower life. An fit mi rach ac ein in draste. E vars dan an fit mi se fosh ein. Fitty. Fit du rach ac vik ein. Agus an fit mi. E vars dan. And I'm sure most parents have had that exact same conversation. Possibly more than once. We heard lots of examples of Mavi and Marsh thing using the phrases am foot, footy, and hamut. Marsh thing wanted to feed the hamsters and asked, Am foot me beuch a horse gaif? May I give them food? Am foot me beuch a horse gaif? Mavi was quite happy to let him and replied, Footy to root bake a horse to gaif. You may give them a small amount. Footy to root bake a horse to gaif. Marstein also asked if Samir could have a sleepover on Saturday. And footy fuddach, may he stay? And footy fuddach. But Maddy replied very definitely, Chanut, he may not. Chanut. And he gets the same negative response when he asks, Am foot me raw chakain? May I get an ice cream? Am foot me raw chakain? Although she eventually gave in to his request. Footy to raw chak vikain. You may have a small ice cream. Footy to raw chak vikain. Let's listen again to some of that conversation. Han takle sen a hamstern. And fit me be a horse gaif. Fitty, fitty to root peck a horse gaif. Has a mere ching and tayakum to shaharn you. Ha? And fit they for a hans and tayakum a shun in a here. Hanut. And fit she pizza a hid to shaharn you. Fitty. Nishing pizza to shaharn you. Nimi heen, u heen, agus samir, and pizza shower life. Now, I'm lucky enough to meet yet another Gaelic learner, and this time I've been joined from his home in Selkirk by John Gillis. But before John tells us why he started learning Gaelic, let's find out a little bit about him. It's Mr. Ian Markilius, sir. I'm John Gillis. I'm a Furich Kutcheri Moven, and in Selkirk, and in Kriach. I was a GP for 30 years and I also spent time practicing medicine in Malawi in the 80s. Now I'm a professor at the medical school at Edinburgh University. I'm involved in a lot of academic research and I also advise on health policy. So I'm a lot the math and the news to tour Hami Fuhus. I remember speaking Gaelic as a child, but it was discouraged in schools back then. We left used when I was seven years old and moved to the borders. We didn't speak much Gaelic as a family after that. In 2017, I decided to try to rekindle my Gaelic and took a course. My learning is going well so far, but it's hard to find the time. I still have a lot of friends and family in Ewes, and it's nice to get back when I can. I love the language, the music, and the culture. I'm in the Mvaul Jen Komenechri, who used to tour. I have three grandchildren, be it Gampumel Trang. Akushakadan Kulyorakam.
I enjoy reading and listening to classical music, and I like to get out on the bike. Aroorach ma, gan voic agus gan inchin. Fál George the Ain, the speak Gaelic. Tafalit, joy. Now, Ian, it took you a wee while to come back to Gaelic again. Why so long? It was only when I stopped working as a GP and started doing some part-time academic work that uh, I had the time to, you know, to take uh, Gaelic learning seriously. And obviously you spoke Gaelic as a child. Did you find that returning quite quickly the more you learned? I think the advantage of speaking it when I was young is that uh, the... the the sounds, the consonants and the vowel sounds, some of which are different from English, w weren't really uh, a problem at all. Uh, so that was still in my head. But the vocabulary you have when you're seven is, <laughs> is quite limited. So I think it certainly helped. I've no doubt about that. Have you ever had a breakthrough moment with hmm. your learning? One was when looking at BBC Alaba programmes, uh, I began to be irritated by the subtitles because I realised I understood quite a lot of what they were saying. Not all of it, but I understood quite a lot of what they were saying. And the subtitles became a bit of a distraction. So what I then do sometimes is just cover them up with a book or something like that, and that makes it easier to concentrate on the on the sounds of the Gaelic. The other thing was... Uh, around the Gaelic, when I began to dream in Gaelic, which was fairly recently, and I realised that then it must have got fairly deep into my subconscious. Now, you said that you worked as a doctor Charlie, a GP in Africa. Did you learn any local languages whilst you were there? We were in a very rural area on the Mozambique border, so we had to learn Chichewa, which was the, the local language. Although the Chichewa we learned was quite limited, it was kind of medical Chichewa, and all the kind of professional people we dealt with spoke uh, English. But it, it it was interesting to you had to learn the local language to work properly as a as a doctor there, um, and I think that's quite good for someone for someone who's basically monoglot like me, you know. Do you feel like attitudes have changed to Gaelic since you were young? When we went to the primary school in Lochmadi, we were told that we, we weren't allowed to speak Gaelic. And my sister remembers being wrapped over the knuckles for answering, a, answering an English question in Gaelic. So, and that would be, of course, unthinkable now. So attitudes are much more positive towards Gaelic on the whole. But at the same time, there is a loss of language in the Gaelic communities. Um, and that's something which certainly does need addressing. It's not just addressing the language, but addressing the whole of the economic situation of the highlands and islands. Yes, indeed. Now, finally, do you have a favourite Gaelic phrase or even word? My favourite Gaelic word of the week is brackel which means boastful or uh, cocky, as in shed then you big brackle a hound. He's a cocky little man. It's a great word, and I definitely would never describe you as brackle. Ach, kiet me le thang. Thank you so much, Ian, for coming to speak to us. I guess ku morst lisha gaelic. Shed the way. And ish, shar shishin kurst vika machis studio. How about leaving the studio for a bit? and then Kujok Halvam Vichelien. Let's join Callum as he continues with his alternative take on Scotland's many attractions. I guess and you, hi, and then Kjalnatua Alupa. He's in the north of Scotland visiting a dairy. You know, I love cashew, cheese, cashew. And I love puns too. And cashew might be the best foodstuff for wordplay. Throw some at me. Dutch cheese. Dutch. What type of cheese is made backwards? Edam. Greek cheese. You fed, I believe I've got a pun about that one. <laughs> blue cheese. Blue. Well, the Gaelic for blue is gorom. Gorom, and well, since I've not got any cheese right now, you might say I'm looking a bit goromless. <laughs> anyway, I'm here in Balaghui, Tain, Balaghui, and I'm here to learn about Kasha. Starting with banya, milk, banya, from cows across the highlands, kashe is made in this corner of Easter Ross, Tev Sher Rosh. 
Bo is the Gaelic for cow. Remember to use that accent, bo. And cro is the Gaelic for cattle, cro. Cheese in Gaelic is a great example of using your accents correctly. For example, if I say, could cash at Callum, that translates as, make Callum angry. <laughs> but if I just add an accent on the A and an E on the end, could cash it at Callum, well, that's put cheese on Callum. Could cash at Callum or could cash at Callum. Take your pick. Right, time to find the big cheese around here. Rory Stone's parents started this company and he's taken over. So Rory, I hear that you're the head cheesemaker around here. Well, I'm prepared to have some competition. <laughs> That's enough of these puns. But seriously, there's no shortage of cheese varieties in the world. What makes a classic Highland cheese? Well, I think traditionally being cattle country, every croft, every little uh, farm had a house cow. Um, no refrigeration, no pasteurization. How could you preserve this wonderful food source, milk. Uh, it's a superfood, it's what we raise babies on. It's full of saturated fats, and long-chain fatty acids, minerals, calcium, all the things you need. So to preserve it, we convert it into cheese. And that's all cheese is, is preserved milk. Crowdy, or gru in Gaelic, gru. What made your parents originally make gru? So my mother took a churn of 10 gallons of milk, and she knew that you had to keep it warm for about 24 hours. So she put it in the family bath, it soured. Uh, my father went up to the chemist in Tain and was given some lactose acidophilus pills or something, which he crunched up. But he just increased the, the acidity of the milk, and it set. And that's how it started? Yes, from those very accidental and humble beginnings. And it's still pretty accidental, but yeah. Well, time to try some of this happy accident. Please. Mmm. It's amazing how banya from the crow turns into cashew. That's pasteurised cashew. <laughs> I should apologise, but uh, I reclaim nothing. Oh, Hamlin, that was a fine cheese course. However, I think some of those puns were bad enough to sour the milk without any help. But as a result of his efforts, we've learned that Bo is a cow, Crow are cattle, and Guru is crowdy. Guru. And Callum will be back with us in our next episode. But if you want to catch up with him and his exploits at any time, make sure you follow us on all of the usual social media platforms. Achanish nach bebein shein bikin a varach Gaelic. A will shift Let's speak some more Gaelic. We know that amfutmi means may I. Amfutmi. And that futimi means I may. Futimi. We're now going to look at another word that behaves in a similar way. Fame, which means need. Fame. To say I need, you would say fame me. Fame me. And if you wanted to say you need, it's feimitu, feimitu. And if you were to say we need, it would be feimishin, feimishin. Now, let's look at how to use these phrases in sentences. If you are eating out, you might say feimimi quad b. I need a menu. Feimimi quad b. And if you needed a knife, feimimi skian. Feimimi skian. Or a spoon. Feimimi span. I need a spoon. Feimimi span. You can also use feimi with a verb to discuss something you need to do. For example, feimimi to peg. Ekavar, you need to pay at the bar. Feimi tu peg ekavar. Or if you have to leave early, feimi me fall of tra. I have to leave early. Feimi me fall of tra. 
And just like food, which we looked at earlier, you can also use fame in its question form. I'm fame in exactly the same way. I'm fame. Do I need? I'm fame. For example, I'm fame of peg a kavar. Do you need to pay at the bar? I'm fame of peg a kavar. And the negative form of fame is chanyem. I don't need. Chanyem. So to use that last example again in its negative form, it would be chanyem u peg e You don't have to pay at the bar. Chanyem u peg e You'll find more explanations and examples on our website. But for the moment, let's listen to this next conversation where you'll hear questions which start um foot and um fame. Hello, Fesker ma a balanicha klusha. Hello, a munchen. Andre, I'm fit the case jainach. Fit the good jennifer. And be she in a cunyah airline, Jamarsh or cheer. Be, be she in a cunyah, Jamarsh, Melisavish. And Gavin Malishkal, have me own. Fame me a gull of rope in the kitchen. And be with ash? Oh, be. Ha upper urakam, I guess fame me a gull of rope in Jamarsh Gachmias. Hey, bish. Do you have car in a computer? Can you fish a gun? And fame a computer urakhenach. Can you aim? And fame a camera urakhenach. Fame me. Fame me, fellow. Gav me a Fame me me a me a me a me a me a Fame me if he glam a skibble fit a hany me ajig song richter. I'm fame nurse and say very much ajig song richter. Fame me. Call for nurse on an hour, but fame me jisha horichter. Hany me she jisha in a chlist. Hany me if he skibble fit a gis hany me if he glam. Fame me if he blah. Hany shame as jisha on his lariate gift. Fame is shame is Have a clown gay shukram. Fame is polis. Did you pick up on why Emma won't be at the next Coram Kapati? She said, Fame me a gobble gopet. I have to go to work. Fame me a golbe gopeth. We always say fame me a golf, not fame me dull. Fame me a golf. Meanwhile, Seamus seemed to be having computer problems. Andra asked him, Am fame computer ur chamach? Do you need to buy a new computer? Am fame computer ur chamach? Notice how a chamach goes at the end of the phrase. Am femu computer ur a chamach. Emma asked Katrina what she had to wear in the cafe. Am femu echu sorichu. Do you need a special uniform? Echu sorichu. Special clothing. Am femu echu sorichu. And she answered, Fame me if he glan agus skippelte. I need to be clean and tidy. Fame me if he glan agus skippelte. Let's listen again to some of that conversation. And as always, you can watch all of the conversations in this series, supported by bilingual transcriptions, on our website. Fame me a gola gopa in the kitchen. And be with Ash? Oh, be. Hey, Bish. Do you have a car in a computer? Can you fix a 
Fem i fall av Gavmalaskalandra. En fem use etik sorge aan zijn gaffe je getrienne. Fem i mi vi klan ake skibbelte a chanjem mi etik sorge. Prepositional pronouns follow a pattern. The me and you words almost always finish with am and at, like akam and akat, umam and umat, leum and lecht. The us and plural or formal you words end in a similar way, sheen and sheave. For example, aking and akiv, or umming and umav. With her and them words, there's often a similarity. Eichke at her and achke at them. Einche in her and umte in them. Or other on her and ore on them. Him words follow their own pattern. Now let's take a quick look at some of what we've covered in this episode. To ask if you may do something, it's unfurth me. Unfurth me. So, may I sit here is unfurth me suyen show. Unfurth me suyen show. The positive response to that question, you may, is furthy. Furthy. And the negative response, you may not, is Chamut, chamut. Similarly, we learned that I must or I need is femimi, femimi. If you have to leave early, you would say femimi fall of tra, femimi fall of tra. The negative form of femi you don't need is chanyem. So, a phrase we all love to hear, you don't have to pay at the bar, is And the question form, do you need, is For example, do you need to pay at the bar? I'm famous pig, Ikevar. Well, fame me she follow vanish. I have to go now. Fame me follow. Ach, food the sheep she come on social rain it's no mean and social to. You can keep up with us on our social media platforms. Food the sheep come on social rain it's no mean and social to. I guess kind of. Remember that on our website, you'll find more examples of everything we've covered in this episode. There is plenty there to keep you going until the next time. Chunanahurushmaha, cheerin drasta.